Hey everyone, this is the second week of July. Today we will uh, cover some of the data breaches that are happening, uh, some of the attacks by nation state actors. There's a new tool that's uh, quite uh, pop getting popular uh, from the red teaming world in the uh, malware world. And then we'll talk about uh, cyber attacks in colleges. Okay. So starting with the nation state activity, uh, there is a report that stated that Chinese hackers are trying to target Russian uh, government and telecoms. And if you've been listening to this podcast, you will realize that this is not new. So what's interesting? Uh, see, these kind of attacks will keep happening as long as there are state-sponsored offensive teams. And what happens in any state-sponsored team uh, is, is exactly what happens in a corporate. Depending on your skill, there would be different set of people. So example, Maybe I'm good in certain applications in IT, so they might give me an IT company as a target. Some person could be good in understanding the banking uh, applications, banking infrastructure, so he will be given a job of targeting a banking uh, customer, okay? so on and so forth. So in this particular case, there is a rat called Bisonal which is found. Now Bisonal has been used popularly by Chinese uh, hackers for a long time. It, it has been seen in attacks on Russia, Japan, South Korea and others. And uh, specific to this attack, uh, there were phishing emails sent using Microsoft Office files. Uh, so what they did is they used a tool called uh, Royal Road where they, you would upload uh, a Word file or an Excel file or any other Office files, embed the rat in it. On a, on a high level and then uh, they will just send it as a phishing email. Now these documents that they are sending typically uh, use lure depending on the target organization. So for example in this case they use CERT which is the country cyber uh, security incident response center uh, as a lure. So their memos, their, uh, their uh, notifications etc. And this is common as you've been uh, noticing uh, depending on the target audience. The content is modified, but the tools are typically same in which they, these groups are com comfortable with. Okay. Now, both Royal Road and Bicycle Rat have been common in Chinese group. This threat actor uh, is known as Tonto Team or Cactus Peak and Earth uh, Atlon. And if you're wondering why there are three different names, it depends on the researcher. So, in cybersecurity world, it's pretty common to track threat actors uh, using a handle and then one. A company would give one name, other company would give another name. Okay, uh, but eventually, you know, some of the research gets uh, to the same data sets. Okay, uh, and by the way, this group was also uh, popular uh, or or seen in uh, recent attacks on India's uh, power sector. Okay, so this is not a new group, and uh, they've been striking for some time. Also on the North Korean side, there is a ransomware called MOI. So uh, this group from North Korea, they've been targeting the hospital or healthcare organizations in the US, assuming that there are lives involved. So these organizations will pay money. And we learned about these from a joint advisory that was released by uh, CISA, FBI and Department of Treasury specifically on this strain. So this notification is, is amazingly uh, detailed. They have talked about tactics, tools and procedures and IOC. So these are technical uh, uh, indicators, uh, methods through which uh, you know, uh, attackers try to get into the infrastructure. And if you go through the advisory, they, you can embed them in your infrastructure and you know, get alerted or even block these attacks. Okay. Now, uh, this note also talks about mitigations and best practices around uh, ransomware. So I would highly recommend going through this. Uh, and Moving on to data breaches side, so there is a new data breach, uh, an organization called CMS, uh, they have a website called uh, cms.gov and they are the center of, for Medicare and Medicaid services for US uh, government. Okay? So they've been breached by a group of attackers or cyber criminals called uh, Kelvin Security. They've dumped an uh, 8 GB database on uh, an online forum. And this database contains 6 million records, uh, some of which contain uh, details of uh, the employees of CMS, which includes dentists, doctors, nurses, physician assistants, etc. 
and this was dumped on 6th of July. There is some personal data in, uh, available there. Okay. Uh, the, the file that was uh, uh, posted uh, is, uh, uh, is a zip file and once you extract the, uh, the file uh, is much larger in nature. Okay. Uh, going back to this group, they uh, have been active since 2015. On the specific website breach forums where this was posted, they have different uh, threads, uh, 87 to be precise. Uh, this uh, they have been dumping both free and paid databases as well as other exploits on these forums. Okay. Now, how this attack was conducted is, is it's a configuration exploit that they did. So, uh, the MongoDB, which is hosted on the AWS, uh, was breached and it, uh, the, the data was pumped from that uh, database. Similarly, there is another breach uh, again on uh, Amazon's S3 bucket, which was left open. It was a configuration issue, and, and this time, it this data belonged to uh, some of the airports in South America. Okay, so the, there are a, at least four airports that are known to be impacted. Some of these airports are in Colombia and Peru, and this data that's there as part of this uh, breach includes photos of airline employees, their national ID card. And this is a serious threat if leveraged by ter terrorist group or some criminal organization uh, because this could contain planes, fuel lines, and GPS uh, map coordinates. Now, this is uh, a configuration problem. Uh, so what happened is on the AWS S3, uh, which is a service to store data on AWS, this bucket was or this folder was not secured. Okay. And hence it got uh, breached it's fixed now, uh, but this is sensitive because this is important to any nation's uh, infrastructure. Now, uh, my recommendation in, in these cases, and it's always a cyber security hygiene thing, is keep doing regular configuration audits of your cloud infra, know your data, know where it is stored, know pe who people are managing this data. So basic data governance practices have to be in place. And of course, the cyber security hygiene of deploying the most common uh, and popular uh, cyber security preventive and detective technologies. Okay. Now, moving on to the metaverse, uh, NFT side. Uh, so, as you know, NFT has been getting popular, they are drawing a lot of money and has drawing a lot of attention from cyber criminals. So, in this specific scenario, uh, there was uh, a call given by Ukrainian government and celebrities to promote NFTs and crypto to raise funds for uh, countries military during the ongoing war. And Ukraine received around uh, $135 million in cryptocurrency donations. And a re recent report has claimed that a group uh, on an NFT called Zelensky NFT, which uh, sold a Ukrainian themed NFT to allegedly help military and refugees, they pocketed that money. So, this particular NFT collection was uh, sold on OpenSea, uh, which is a popular website for. All the uh, collectibles on NFTs and uh, you know, anything of uh, from the met a lot of stuff from the metaverse side. Okay, so it had 9,500 artworks which included uh, you know images of their, their president Vladimir Zelensky in various personas like Hulk, Doctor Strange, Binder Turtle, etc. And each NFT costed around two seventy six dollars. Okay. Zelensky NFT team has denied such acquisitions and they've been calling it absurd. Who knows, uh, uh, but NFT breaches are not new. There have been reports uh, that OpenSea users lost $1.7 million in a phishing attack earlier and then $2.9 million again in a different uh, uh, Instagram account from Bold Ape uh, Yacht Club. Okay. So, as I was saying earlier, cyber criminals move to where money is. Okay. As NFT is promising money, uh, you know, there is definitely money involved cyber attacks are, cyber attackers are going there okay. uh, by the way there was another project called doodle dragons they promised to donate all the earnings to the charity but they took all the money and ran. so the the thing is with nfts is you don't know who the uh, people are so example in this case of zelensky nft nobody knows uh, who the real people are right uh, there are some personas but any in anybody can create an nft collections and build profile around it and claim to do anything and they can take your funds and you know, 
then I don't agree with it. So be careful with your money. Uh, on the red teaming tool side, so there is a popular tool uh, called Brute Rattle, uh, and it has a version uh, called BRC4. It has been reported to seen in some of the malicious samples uh, that are there on the internet. So this team that was researching uh, this data in their investigations, they found that this malware sample is not detectable by any of the antivirus engines in virus total. Now, people who don't know, it's a common practice that uh, cyber security researchers uh, or people who are detecting, uh, uh, or in fact, products also, they send a new malware sample to virustotal.com and uh, virustotal.com has a repository of around 60 next generation antivirus agents and they give their verdict or their analysis of this particular uh, sample. And uh, in this case, this sample was not known to any uh, antivirus, which means it was pretty good. Okay. It was like a zero day sample. Now this tool kit is created by a person called Chetan Nair. Chetan is known in the uh, cyber security world. He's worked with multiple MNCs uh, in offensive roles, uh, uh, red teaming roles, and incident response, etc. And he recently quit his job full time, which was full time job and you know, moved, moved this side project to a full uh, commercial product. And the product is getting sold uh, for 2500 USD. In his Twitter handle recently, he reported that he has already sold 480 plus licenses, which is great. And you know, uh, this this is great uh, because there's a new tool. Any corporate can take it and check their defenses. Okay, because it's an adversarial uh, attack simulation platform, just like Cobalt Strike. And what happens in such cases is there are good people and bad people, and bad people also buy these licenses and they try to use it. Activities and just the way it's happening with Cobalt Strike, same is happening with uh, uh, Brute Rattle, right? So, uh, no, so there are samples getting reported, and as this as this new tool would get popular, attackers will use it. So in this case, um, the researchers found that this particular sample was talking to uh, some system hosted on AWS on port 443, which is supposedly secure port, uh, and also. There were 41 malicious IP addresses found, 9 BRC4 samples and 3 organizations across North and South America that are known to be impacted by this tool. Okay? Now this is similar to a uh, uh, sophisticated attack called APD29 uh, which leveraged uh, well-known cloud storage and on online collaboration tools. Okay? So uh, this will happen. You know, uh, It's easy to buy a tool from the market and then use it in a malicious campaign for cyber criminals rather than building your own tool, right? They will use whatever works, okay? Whether you buy, borrow, steal, right? Uh, they will do that to meet their objectives. Okay. Now, also in uh, US, a college called College of Desert, uh, they're based in Palm, uh, Palm Desert, California. They are a victim of cyber attack. So they have around 12,500 students in the college and they recently reported that they were hit by a malware attack and this is the second time it has happened. So uh, they are using it outside experts to restore online services uh, and campus phone lines after the attack and you know, it will be fixed. But there is a trend that I am seeing. Education sector for the last 2-3 years have been constantly hit by cyber criminals to get money because they have lesser sophisticated infrastructure compared to Okay. So, in uh, 2021, 62 school district and, and campuses of 26 colleges and universities were reported to be hit and this attack uh, disrupted around uh, 1000 individual schools. Okay. And in, data was stolen in at least 44 of the 88 incidents which included sensitive information about both employees and students. Okay. And this was posted online. So there is a new ransomware called Nokoyawa which has been found and it's been uh, uh, detected that they are trying to use or the developers behind the ransomware are trying to use some of the codes that is already available on the internet. Now this sample was put first reported in Feb 2022 and it had significant similarities with the ransomware called Karma. 
the karma ransomware ca was traced back to a family of ransomware called lemity uh, which was reported in 2019 now in april 2022 when the nokoyava samples were detected uh, they had new features uh, that were not available in the uh, feb version so what's happening is these uh, dev ransomware developers are taking codes from existing sample uh, or existing uh, uh, ransomware and embedding uh, them in their uh, products now this is uh, you know this is not a surprising thing for me developers often do that they would copy paste code for particular feature from one uh, project to another project so uh, that is uh, uh, you know a regular practice by developers now there th where this code comes from from in case of ransomware is either you know a group leaking the code source code or you know somebody putting it on public you recall examples of revel and contai ransomware uh, and eventually some code would be used by the developers uh, i i remember that there was a uh, banking trojan there still is actually a uh, banking trojan called zeus and it was a toolkit that allowed any person to create a trojan from it now zeus was leaked online and you know from zeus there were multiple families of malware toolkits that were created okay taking the original source code and you know modifying it and adding new capabilities okay so this will keep happening um, but you know this is a trend that's also now seen in ransomware okay uh, the, and the last thing microsoft has enabled macros by default now for those who don't know macros are used by uh, uh, users of microsoft office to automate commonly repeated test tasks and uh, they are used in word powerpoint and excel but they've been very popularly used by attackers to deploy ransomware or malicious scripts so you know whenever somebody sends a document it will ask the user uh, you know or it will use the macros functionality to run some of these scripts okay now microsoft had disabled it which led to you know decline in office malware but with microsoft re-enabling it it is suspected that there will be resenders of office malware okay which uh, is not surprising i'm sure microsoft has its uh, own good reasons why they re-enabled it uh, and you know when they while you know, earlier they decided they will keep it disabled okay but be aware uh, if you don't know where the origin of the file if you don't know what the macro is doing and still asking you to enable macros please don't okay uh, it often leads to uh, malicious scripts getting executed on the system okay So with that, I'm thankful to my sources again. Thank you to all of you for listening to uh, this content. Uh, if you are on YouTube or Spotify or one of the other podcasting platforms, please send me questions on my Twitter handle or put it as comment on uh, the YouTube channel. I try to cover it as much as I can. Uh, thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Till then, keep learning.